Hey, howdy there, cowpokes, and welcome back to another episode of 10 Amazing Details You Probably Didn't Know in Red Dead Redemption 2. For this first detail, during the mission where Dutch and Arthur wade through murky swamp waters, Thomas will tell Arthur to stop moving when he notices an alligator passing by. But if Arthur does not listen to Dutch and Thomas, they will make a remark about him being insane. Hold up. Hey. While the gang robs the trolley station, Dutch will instruct Arthur to rob the civilians. If you don't do as he says, he will question and then scold you for it. Now remember, God help me! We just want money. Don't make us kill you. Mr. M, leave these fine folks of their valuables. Mr. S, check that room back there. Why aren't their pockets empty yet, Mr. M? Why aren't you taking donations, Mr. M? Get their money. Let's hurry this up. During the O'Driscoll raid on Shady Bell, Dutch will tell you to go downstairs to help the gang hold off the attackers. But if you don't listen or if you ignore him, he will quickly shove you out of the door. The now! Go on! God damn crap! Come on, damn Driscoll! This next detail is one of my absolute favorite. Arthur and the gang will have to fight off the Cuban army on Guarma. After they are alerted of the incoming warship, Arthur will emerge from the fort and will see two small birds fly away from the ledge just before the battle begins. What's interesting is just after the battle ends and the smoke begins to settle, you can see those two same birds return. This is symbolizing the spirits of Hosea and Lenny following Arthur. There are several members of the gang who have died and are symbolized by their respective spirit animals such as Arthur and the deer or the coyote. And then also in the epilogue, he can be seen symbolized by a blue jay if he had high honor, or eagle flies and the eagle, or even my guy and the rat. There are a lot of connections from each character to their spirit animal, and I'll elaborate more on that in a separate video. During the loan sharking missions for Strauss, Arthur can inform him of his progress with the collections. After they have all been visited, Arthur can have a hidden dialogue with Strauss to tell him to stop preying on the desperate people. I know. Called in on a debtor. Well done. In the box. Mm-hmm. No more desperate, Strauss. It's in a debtor's nature. Less desperate, then. I'm guessing Mr. Crawford's dream of Van Horn being the trading post of the future is well and truly dead. Arthur can visit the Van Horn post officer, who will mention that Mr. Crawford's vision of Van Horn is not living up to his expectations. What's interesting is that if you go down a little ways further on the dock, you can find the fence whose name happens to be Mr. Crawford. This could mean that he is the man who is in charge of Van Horn or he is the overseer or it could even be that he's the man who founded Van Horn. Little is known about it and there aren't any further explanations or clues as to this but it's clear that he's the only man named Crawford and it is assumed that this is who the post officer is talking about. Well, hello again. Been some time now eh? Have a look around see what you might need. Oh look at you. Been on a bit of a spree have you? What are you talking about? Ah, nothing. Just thought you looked a bit peakier than when I last saw you. Don't mind me. Immediately after the Saint Denis bank heist failure, what Dutch now? and the gang take refuge in an know. abandoned apartment. From there, they wait until they can decide their next this move. When Dutch gets the idea to escape town no, on a boat, well, what true. most players miss is the exact here. moment Dutch gets his idea. If you look closely, you can see that Dutch is contemplating their escape until he notices a painting of a boat on the wall which there are several in this apartment, and that's when he realizes that's their move. 
getting his idea from the painting that he sees. I got it. A boat. What you mean? We stay here till nightfall. Then we sneak on down to the docks. We get ourselves out of here. Yeah, where? Any place will do. That's all I got. We leave. We lie low. We come back for the rest in a few weeks. I'm guessing it's that. We die out there right now. Exactly. Now, everybody, calm down. I mean, oh, look at us. After stealing the dynamite wagon from Van Horn with Bill, Arthur can return to that town for some hidden dialogues and interactions with the residents. The post officer will mention it as well as the Annisburg gunsmith. There will even be a woman who'll approach you to scold you for killing some of the men. Hey there, fella. Welcome back. Just can't believe all those people dead over a wagon of dynamite. This place keeps going from bad to worse. Welcome back, sir. What were you looking for today? Did you hear a wagon of dynamite was hijacked in Van Horn? Apparently, one of the outlaws was shooting from the lighthouse. Huh? Listen, lady, I didn't mean to cast any aspersions on your fine town. Don't try and make no excuses. It's cold-blooded murder, and you know it. Listen, ma'am, I didn't mean anything against your town or you. I'm in a messy business, is all. That's what you gotta say? I hope you die in the street like they did. Why are you defending those thugs anyway? You knew one of them? That it? I kill your honey. You! You're a sick man! Go away! After the cutscene for That's Murphy Country concludes, you can return to Dutch for some hidden dialogue, where he will be uncharacteristically demanding, and he will also mock you for wanting to save people's lives. Considering a famous chess move. Those oily enactors of a mediocre justice, the Pickertons, and their benefactor, the depressing millionaire, Leviticus Cornwall, they want us, Arthur. They want us. And they are going to have us. Well, maybe they ain't the problem. Meaning? I don't know. It's just, well, I can't help but feel we would have been better running off someplace else. Oh, but the, the game ain't over, Arthur. I mean, I ain't, I ain't played my my final move, but I guess I'm more interested in saving lives than winning a chess. And maybe life ain't such a thing to cling on to so tightly. No doubt. What about the women? Was I unclear? Take Charles and find somewhere for us to move to. Will you leave me to think now? I need to think. What are you waiting for? I thought you were concerned with saving lives, Arthur. For this last detail, you can occasionally hear Dutch give motivational speeches throughout the story. You can see much of the gang give him their undivided attention. But as the story progresses, you can see how the gang completely gives up on Dutch. As, his, as in his final speeches, you can see that nobody is listening to him. Even Micah won't care enough to support him and he can be seen sleeping. Now, Blackwater, it weren't nothing nice. I know that. But we... We... have to push on. Even though we walk through hell. Well, we walk together. We walk together. Remember that? All of you, remember that.
listen to me. All of you. Listen. We're here. And we are safe now. And that is the main thing. Listen to me. You have got to keep faith. You've got to. Now, I know. I know. I miss Jose. I surely do. I miss every man and every woman who fell. I do. And I would die in their place gladly if I could. This world is unkind. But it won't break me. Not while I have you by my side. We... We get some money, and we can still... They won't catch me. They won't catch me! And I promise... Whosoever stands by my side... They won't catch you neither. They won't. We're still a step ahead of them. Just about. Yes, and we must stick together. Now, more than ever before. Okay, Dutch. Hey, get up. Wake him up a little! There's some folks who don't deserve it.